Okay, so this video is for advanced users and maybe people who have worked with chatbots before or you're just familiar with the technical world. If you're a complete beginner, you need to watch the video I've linked below that I published on my other channel. There's also a website that gives you a tutorial on how to make your first API call. It is completely for beginners. This is for intermediate advanced people. I'm just basically going to show you the features just so you can find your way around and then you can jump in and start using this. Okay. So first of all, I want to point something out to you. It won't make sense right now, but I want to show you on the home screen, there is a data button. And when you go here, you can create data tables. So here's one that I've created. And basically you just create columns and you can make them required. You can encrypt them. You can do all kinds of things for the kind of data that you want to include. And then you do need to assign it to the bots that you want to use it with. So read, write, or delete, and you can edit those um, permissions. Okay. Then to see the content that you've collected in your data tables, you create a table view. And when you do a table view, you've got to select the table that you're pulling data from. You've got to identify the columns exactly. And then you've got to update and then you'll test. This is how you can see the content that's in there. Okay. So you can see this is the data in my data table. Just remember that I'm going to show you how to put content into there, but it's going to be a minute. Okay. I got to show you some other stuff first. So I'm just going to jump into a bot that I have and you're going to create a new one, of course. So I'm in this bot and your starting point will most certainly be a dialogue task or the knowledge AI. That's how you're going to get your bot built. I'm going to show you some other stuff first. Okay. Let's go down to configurations. Okay. Here you can change your general settings. You can change your permissions for how different pieces of user information are displayed. You can set up variables for things that you use over and over and over within the bot. And you can also create feedback surveys that you attach to different tasks to see how well they, how well you did. Okay. Under integrations, you can actually add other applications that are external to core AI, you can add those here. For testing, you can actually batch test multiple um, user utterances. And an utterance is basically just what a person would say when they're asking for help, like check the weather. That's their utterance. That's what they say. So you can test those in batches or you can test them one by one. So for example, um, here I'm going to type change my address. And over here, you're going to get an analysis and it is going to tell you how the three main engines determined the correct answer. So basically machine learning will search for an answer. Fundamental meaning will search for an answer. Knowledge graph will search for an answer. And then those three engines will, will send out what they believe is the correct answer. And then the ranking and resolver, which is the fourth engine takes those winners and decides who the actual winner is, or basically like what the person is wanting. So you take a user utterance and you're trying to figure out the intention. What is the intent? What does the user want? And that is what these engines do. In this example, it's told me that uh, for the address change, which is what we believe the user wants, that will require two entities from the user. An entity is a unique piece of information from someone. So for example, a person's name that is unique, we would collect that as an entity. Okay, let's jump up to intelligence. So you can handle a few things here. These are the different kinds of events that you can turn on and off. You can manage the interruption. So for example, if someone says, change my address, but then they immediately say, check the weather, that's an interruption. So we were going to change their address, but now we've been interrupted with a new intention. And so you can set how that interruption will be handled. So maybe we just completely ignore the second thing they said, or maybe we ignore the first thing they said and we jump to the second thing. All kinds of options here in the interruptions. Uh, Multi-intent detection. So you can choose to have your bot be able to identify two intentions from one utterance. For example, check the weather and book me a flight to Atlanta. That's two different things that need to happen. And so that's called multi-intent detection. 
Um, standard responses are also just like the standard default things your bot is going to say when different events happen, and you can go and change that as well. Okay, under natural language, um, you've got some training options here. So first of all, here's all your dialogue tasks and the things that a user might want to happen. Here are the different entities that you've built, and you can see this is a total mess. Normally, these would be titled very nice. I've just been using this to, to test things out and play around. You've got synonyms. So a synonym is something that means the same thing. So for example, let's say for the color blue, um, I want to also accept um, if they say teal, navy, or denim. If they say those three things, that all means blue. So I just, blue, that's what that means. Um, that's the synonym. Those are all synonyms of blue. A concept is different. A concept is a bigger um, range of things. For example, colors, whereas blue is one color and red and orange and black. So maybe I want, um, someone might say, I want to buy a red blanket. Um, I don't care what color they say, right? They can say any color. I'm going to send them to all the blankets I have for sale. Okay, so that, that's a concept. And then you can use synonyms and concepts to form patterns, and I'll show you that later. Uh, so you can do patterns. So if they say, for example, buy color blanket, if they have those three conditions in one statement, I always want to send them to the special sale section or, or something. So that's how you can build patterns. Um, okay. Now, let's just move along here. Digital skills. A digital form is one way you can collect a lot of entities from a person in a very easy fashion. So for example, instead of asking about the email and then asking about their home city, I just say, hey, fill this out. And they fill out everything that is here. This is very easy to drag and drop and create a form. Digital views. This is where you can add widgets to your chat window. So um, a widget is basically a visual representation of some information. And then we take that widget, we place it on what's called a panel. And a panel will show up here on the side. So these are panels I have built on my chat bot and they have widgets. Each panel has widgets. My, my widgets aren't working, but, but that's what those will look like, okay? Now, uh, small talk. This is just basically what is the bot going to say for like general conversational human like, hey, how are you? What's up? That kind of thing. You can program how you want that to sound. Now we're going to just jump in here. I'm going to show you the knowledge AI first because it is the easiest thing to start with. These are just question answer types of things like what are your hours? Nine to five. These are not conversation pieces. These are just like simple answers. So let me just go show you one. Um, you can actually have alternate versions of the question. So maybe they will say, how can I return this shirt I bought? But they might also say, how can I get my money back? Or how can I get a refund? And so you can add alternates here. Then you add your message down here. You can add an extended response which will have a new chat bubble. So sometimes you might have a response that's really long. Breaking it up into pieces improves the readability and actually makes it seem more human-like. So you might want to break that up. You could also add an alternate response. In other words, maybe one time they say, our hours are from nine to five. And then another time they might say, we open our doors at nine and we close our doors at five. And so it just gives a different um, way of saying things, it makes it seem more human-like. If the same person should ask that question again later, it just looks like it's somebody else talking. Um, okay, that's how that works. There's lots of ways to import content um, in. You can pull it from a document, you can pull it from a spreadsheet. There's all kinds of ways to get your knowledge bank built up. Dialogue tasks are real, where the real action happens, okay? So I'm going to show you this one. It's a very simple one. Uh, basically, you build dialogue tasks using nodes. And so the nodes, you just drag them out wherever you want them. A message node is just simply a statement. Maybe it's, I see you have an account with us. It's, it's just a, a statement. There's no responses needed. An entity is where you're going to ask them a question. What is your name? And then they've got to give you their name and you're going to do something with it. A confirmation is yes or no. 
a bot action. This is where like all the action happens, okay? And then you've got other um, little things you could use. Here's where you could put in a form um, and just other things that are absolutely very useful. I don't use them that much because I only build bots for fun. And so I don't have a need for these other things. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look here. Um, this is what an entity node looks like. You enter um, the prompt here, it tells them what to do. And then that will be saved into context that we can use that later. And I will show you how here in just a minute. You also have some other panels here and yet this gives you just more flexibility but you don't have to mess with any of that. So you just really need to um, stay on this front first panel that it shows you on each of these, add some content there, and that's really all you have to do. Okay, now we're gonna look at this bot action. And so within the bot action, the types of actions you can do would be a service, script is like JavaScript, logic, that's that if then type of thinking, webhooks and processes. We're gonna look at a service node. So here's one I have built. For every service node, there are different types of service that you can do. So you can do a custom service, so that would be like an API call. You can do um, all kinds of other stuff here. Data service, that's the one I'm about to show you. Feedback service, so if you want it add one of those feedback surveys that you created. Okay, let me show you data service. This is how you populate those data tables. We're gonna go ahead and edit the request. This is what it looks like. You've gotta choose which table you're wanting to populate or edit. You choose what you want to do. So you can add, you can update, you can delete. And then it automatically pulls all the columns that are in that table and you can choose, um, for this example, I'm gonna update. And so I only wanna update this one particular column and I want to update it with the entity that the user gave me of the home city. And you'll notice I have this in double curly brackets, context dot entities dot your home city. The references to all of the context, which by the way, there are different levels. And so you have like, um, the main big level, and that's a piece of information that follows a person every time they use a bot. And so that could be like their name and their address. Those are common things that follow a person. But there's some things that are unique only to one particular conversation. So for example, maybe the day they're looking for red blankets, the color red is important to remember. But that's not important in the future. Uh, that's actually a really bad example. But you have different levels of context. Um, an entity level, at this level, unless I take an action to save it permanently somewhere else, this type of context would be deleted once this um, chat is closed. And so then you save it and you're good to go. Now, um, you can also quote this back to people. So you'll notice here that I've let them know that the home location has been updated for the account with that particular email. So I've actually taken that from what they gave me and that also makes it feel very personal. Now, whenever you train, this is where you can add those special patterns. So if you want, you know, if a person either, they say this, you know, they say something very, very similar to this, or if they meet a pattern, and that's where I could, you know, do that. If they say, maybe I have a synonym of address, and that includes city, street, zip code. And so I might say, if they say change plus address, you know, anything that meets that pattern, this is what they want to do is this particular dialogue task. Okay, one other super, super handy I mean, it's like awesome, is Talk to Bot. Actually, you couldn't really do a whole lot without Talk to Bot. Talk to Bot allows you to test out the content that is within the environment, not necessarily published live. If you wanted to go live, you have to go and publish that. But this is just like everything you've built here in, inside the, the Core AI platform. You can test it out here. You'll always want the debug log on. And on the debug log, let me just show you how it works. Let me just say, change home address and over here it's it's showing me how the bot is processing this it's telling me it's it's an identified an intent and then now we're at an entity node and we're waiting for input 
You can also look at a more detailed analysis of how that happened. This can help you to identify errors in the way the machine learning is operating. And then session context and variables, that is all that information that is going to be saved. So entities is empty right now because the user has not given us any information yet, but that will populate as the user gives me information. And then you see you have, um, so like user context, this is information that follows that person throughout all conversations. If you do a, an API call, you'll have a custom variable created right here, and that's gonna be a JSON object that you can go in and look at and, and you know pull content from. Okay, um, now one thing, you know the panels and widgets that I showed you earlier, those will not ever show up on TalkToBot. Those only show up on your live version. So the only way you can see those, remember, is to go and, and use that test button here that's how you can see what they look like. So this is like a special talk to bot version. I don't know why it's like that, but that's how that is. Now I'm gonna show you how to deploy. So once you've built it, you got everything going, you're ready to deploy. Uh, there's lots of places that you can uh, put this chatbot. All of this is gonna require some very technical knowledge. Like you're gonna have to know what a client ID is and a client secret and how to go get it and how to do um, JWT tokens and all that kind of stuff. But the easy thing that anyone can do is the web mobile client. So when you go here, this is initially going to be off. You just simply turn it on. You copy your URL. This is what they call the one click website. And then um, you put that into you know a browser window. And here is my chat widget. And I can even um, test out the content that I have loaded so far. So it looks like I haven't published yet, so it's not recognizing my my utterance there. So that's your chatbot. That's what it looks like in the live version. And then you'll want to go over and publish. So every time you make updates, you want to publish. It'll always want to comment. That's what I do a lot is that, <laughs> that right there. And you publish that. Okay. Now, if you send this out to your friends or people and they start adding content and what have you, you can actually analyze that using the analyze tab. And once you have conversations, they will start to show up here. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna actually do a custom date range. And we will just see here, I'm gonna do all conversations, even the active ones. So just so you can see what this looks like, cause it's a, it's a really nice layout. Um, so see here, it's color coded. It just, it looks so good. When you hover over stuff, it gives you more details. If you're running scripts and API calls, it's going to show you, you know, how well those are performing. And there's just all kinds of information here. So it, it's really amazing. Under manage, you can go ahead and upgrade your account if you wanted to. So like, you know, there's, you're on a free account probably initially, but you might want to be on a paid account to do more things and, and be more awesome. Okay, so one last thing, back to the main page. If you go to the marketplace, these are all um, bot templates that you can use. So basically Core AI has built these little mini bots and you can make your own bot out of them. So for example, if you um, are doing some employee onboarding and that's what you want to use your bot for, Go ahead and start with this. They'll have tons of use cases in there for you. And you can also just kind of see how a bot is organized and how it works. So these are all free, even if you don't have a paid account. So check it out. Um, Core AI has excellent documentation and they have excellent training. So their academy, I believe, is free. They have hundreds of courses. It's, it's super awesome. If you've been looking for a chat bot, look no more. You found it in Core AI. Have fun.